Welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about acid washing. I'm going to go over some do's and don'ts and some cautions, I guess. I guess that would go with the don'ts, but I'll expand on that also. And if you're thinking, well, how, what can I learn from a podcast? You can learn quite a bit from me just talking about an acid wash. But I do have a couple acid wash videos that I also filmed. And I'll put the links to those also in the description of this podcast. So you can pull those up on YouTube. And you can watch the actual acid wash process being done. Pool Service Pro. Open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Also receive priority service, enhanced rebate programs, a discount on your general liability insurance through SPA, a discount on your pool riding software through Skimmer, and an opportunity to co-brand with Leslie's on your social media, website, truck, and more. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Leslie's Pro. Okay, let me start with the things you should not do when you go to acid wash a pool. And some of the ones that may seem obvious, but I'll throw them out there just in case you're not aware of this. The only two surface types you can acid wash are a plaster or a pebble tech surface type. So you can't acid wash a fiberglass pool, nor can you acid wash a vinyl pool. So if you try to acid wash those two surface types, you'll destroy that surface type. So it's only for, again, a gunite, a cement, however you want to call it, pool. You'll know the surface type because it's a solid surface. It's not fiberglass or vinyl. So that's the first caution I'll throw out there. The other one, and again, these are the don'ts because you have to be aware that the acid wash does take a layer of the surface off of the pool. So if you're draining a pool to acid wash it and the surface is cracked, if the steps have cracks in them or chips of plaster, or if you see visible, you know, chipping and cracking in the surface. By doing an acid wash, you're going to make this a lot worse. And you're going to exasperate the problem. So instead of the surface looking better, in most cases when there are cracks and chips, you're going to make the surface look worse. So the surface of the pool is really important. You don't want to acid wash a pool surface that basically needs to be replastered because you're going to make it worse. So don't do an acid wash if there's visible cracks or visible chips in the plaster that will make the overall results even worse. Another thing you should never do is promise the results. So having a waiver is a good idea or just having something in writing or a text message with the customer saying I'm going to drain an acid wash the pool and there's no guarantee that the stains are going to be lifted or that the pool is going to look any better than it looks now. Now this may sound like a weird disclaimer and you may not want to go to that extreme, but I'm going extreme just so you know that if you guarantee something and it doesn't happen, then they're going to say, well, I paid you $600 for this and I still see the stain. That's the problem. So limit your guarantees to the fact that the surface will usually look better after an acid wash, but we can't guarantee eliminating all these stains. So that's something that I want to emphasize is never make a guarantee that the surface is going to look really good because you don't know acid washes turn out differently. Sometimes they turn out better than others. Sometimes they turn out amazing. Sometimes they kind of turn out like, eh, did I even do the acid wash? So it's one of those things where you won't know until you actually do it. But from experience, you can pretty much tell which pools are going to really have great results from an acid wash, which pools may struggle or not have the best results. Something that may not be an issue in a lot of areas is you don't want to drain a pool and do an acid wash if the air temperature is over 90 degrees. Over 100 degrees is definitely a no-no, but basically what happens when you drain a pool and the sun's hitting it with that kind of temperature, chances are when you do the acid wash, everything's going to be fine. But when you fill the pool back up, don't be surprised if you see plaster chips because what happens is that the sun will bake the empty pool and cause damage to it at that temperature. So anything over 90 to 100 degrees is probably something you don't want to do. No acid washing when the temperature is that hot. So a lot of regions like Arizona, California, Nevada, when it's summertime, you really can't do an acid wash when the temperature is that high. And I say 90 degrees, but more like 95 to 100 degrees is probably the borderline. But I would say 90 degrees is a good baseline. Anything over that, because some areas may be 93, 94, you don't know. 
and this could cause damage to the plaster. So do the acid wash when the air temperature is in the 80, 70, something like that. Never over 90 to 100 because you have the potential of having cracks form and chips form in the plaster. Even if you have a drain just for one day, this could happen with really high or hot extreme temperatures. It's also important to note that the acid to water ratio is really a critical factor in the acid wash. You never want to put straight acid on the pool. And you can put straight acid on maybe one stain in particular if you're really careful and experienced. So if there's a rust stain that you think you can get out with the acid, try putting it on there directly. More than likely, if you're gonna have, if you have a rust stain that's not coming off with the acid, I wouldn't go with straight acid. I would simply get a vitamin C tablet from say Costco. They're really big tablets, and rub that area with the vitamin C tablet. And you'll be surprised that a lot of the times that rust stain will lift. Sometimes it's not even a rust stain, but it's actually the gunite underneath showing up through there. In that case, no amount of acid is going to remove that. It's just a defect in the pool, and you're going to have to cut out that section, patch it, which is probably not something you would want to do anyway. But that's the remedy for that. But if you have stains that aren't coming off, putting straight acid on there doesn't normally work all the time. And you can do it, but I would not recommend using straight acid on the plaster. I mentioned that the acid takes off a layer of the plaster. And by using straight acid, you're just burning that surface completely off at that point. And of course, acid washing requires you to drain the water out of the pool. So another don't is not to drain the water out onto the grass around the pool area. So let's say you have a 20,000 gallon pool and around it is grass or dirt. And if you drain that water directly into the dirt or grass, you're going to cause something that may cause the pool to pop out. Now pool pop out is extremely rare and it takes a lot of water to be saturated in the ground for that to happen. So the water table has to be in a certain perfect condition for the pool to pop out. It's usually not going to happen so it's something that's extremely rare again. But if you drain the pool directly into the dirt or grass around the pool, you can actually cause that to happen. So drain the pool to the appropriate location and Another tip here is you don't want to drain the pool directly into the street or gutter in most areas. In California, that will get you a fine of $10,000 in most cases for draining a pool directly into the sewer. They're really strict about that here. So drain it into the, I mean not the sewer, but to the gutter. So drain the pool into a P-trap or sewer line directly, not into the gutter where that water runs off, usually into the ocean in California. That's where the water goes. So check with your area to see the best place to drain the pool. And a little pro tip here, if you do have to drain the pool anywhere where someone can see the water draining, do this at nighttime so that no one calls the city on you. Even if it's a legal drain, the city code inspector could really hassle you and they may not know the rules themselves and it could cause a big mess. So if you're gonna drain a pool anywhere where it's visible or where you think a neighbor will see it, Drain it at nighttime so you limit some of the issues that may come up there. I'm not saying drain the pool illegally, but then again, you don't want to cause any problems either. So just be careful where you drain the pool and when you drain the pool. And of course, you want to make sure you don't drain it again into the dirt directly around the pool because you can cause a problem with the pool structure by doing that. In other words, you can cause it to actually pop up by saturating the ground with 20,000 gallons of water. Another don't is don't do the acid wash without proper protection. So you definitely want to be wearing some kind of safety glasses. I wear safety sunglasses. You want to be wearing gloves. You don't want to do this barefoot. I know there's a video on YouTube where a guy's doing this barefoot. I don't recommend doing that. You want to wear proper protection and the acid can burn your skin. I always wear a respirator because the acid fumes can be strong and you can be overwhelmed by them because you're in this area that's kind of underground in, in a way. And so if the fumes are rising in that little basin, you could get really sick from the acid fumes and burn your lungs and actually cause damage to your lungs. So you don't want to, definitely don't want to use the muriatic acid without any without the proper safety gear on. You also want to make sure that when you're draining the water out with the sump pump in the deep end of the pool, that you put soda ash in the little water area at the bottom. So there should be a pool of water at the bottom of the pool at all times as the acid mix is draining down there. And make sure you have an appropriate amount of soda ash in there to neutralize the acid. What's going to happen if you don't do that? When you refill the pool, 
There's going to be a ring of discoloration down in the deep end because you didn't use soda ash to neutralize the acid pooling up there in that little bit of water by the sump pump. And this will be kind of an ugly looking finish to an acid wash. So make sure you have soda ash or baking soda. Soda ash is probably better in the basin there to neutralize the acid. And I think one of the last don'ts, and I know I spent like 10 minutes telling you what not to do, which is really important, I think, for you to hear. One of the last don'ts is don't do an acid wash by yourself if you never have done one before with anyone else. So I suggest if you're new to the industry and you want to learn this skill, ask to be a helper on a few acid washes by another company. Be the helper, you know, hang out, do the watering and, and rinsing while they do the acid wash. Observe and kind of learn how the process is done because this is not something that generally can be done by just watching a video, although I have a couple of videos you can watch on the process. You should actually do it firsthand with someone else who's been doing acid washes for a while. That's how I learned. I was the helper on acid washes and I learned the technique to do it properly. And this is something that you need to actually do, I think. So put a sign up at the wholesaler saying, hey, I'm willing to be a helper doing an acid wash to learn the process. And if you have an acid wash coming up, I'll definitely tag along and help you out. Now, those are all the don'ts. And I think, again, it's important to emphasize that because you could do damage to the plaster. It could come out really bad if you don't do things properly. Let's talk about some of the things that you can do to make sure the acid wash comes out really well for you and for the customer and everyone's happy at the end of the day by the result of the acid wash. I think the acid mixture and acid to water mixture is really important. So Biodex has a really great acid wash uh, right up on their site. You can go to the Biodex website and I'll just read off the URL here for you. So you can go see this kind of right up here. You can just Google and type in Biodex acid wash and you'll find this document I think on the first tab or so. Just go to Biodex bio-dex.com and you can do slash acid and as you're typing it should be biodex.com acid wash the biodex way and the formula here for the acid wash is here and I suggest you follow this one because I think it's a really great way to do the acid wash properly and this is the mixture that I use so you get a five gallon bucket you put in two gallons of water and, you know, if it's really cold, you want to put in a little bit of warm water because that will keep the other other additives you're going to put in there from kind of coagulating and turning into this kind of syrupy mix. So you want to put two gallons of water and warm water um, is preferable. So, you know, like 70, 80 degree temperature and then put in a one gallon, put in one gallon of acid. So it's two gallons of water to one gallon of acid and you're going to put it in the five gallon bucket. It makes it, you should have a five gallon bucket. You know, you can find them anywhere. Buy them at Home Depot. Those big paint buckets in the paint section are five gallon buckets. If you're wondering what size a five gallon bucket is. So use that to mix the water and acid together. Then you want to put in eight ounces of the Biodex Plaster White and Bright. And by the way, Biodex is not paying me to do this podcast, but the products do work really well. So the Biodex Plaster White and Bright helps with the surface color, of course. But it also thickens up the acid wash, um, the water acid mixture, and it really cuts down on the fumes that you're going to be breathing in by using the plaster white and bright. Then you want to put in 8 ounces of Aquadex 50 stain off, and this is a really good stain remover. works really well, so it'll remove a lot of the stains on the surface with this mixture. And then blend them together with like a wooden paint stick. Don't use anything metal, of course, because you're mixing muriatic acid. And I use 31% muriatic acid. I suggest that level to get the right strength. And you can get that at your local pool store. You can't get it at Home Depot. Typically, Home Depot is like at 15%. This will kind of mix up the ratios. And you, you don't even know if it's even that strong. So I would use pool store quality muriatic acid. Leslie's Pool Supply has the 31% muriatic acid. They have 950 locations. So walk into any Leslie's Pool Supply and you'll get the 31% muriatic acid in most cases. I prefer using a flowering pot as my preferred way of pouring the acid on the surface so that it kind of goes on the side of the pool and goes down smoothly. So find a good flower pot with a nice nozzle with the holes in it and you will find this to be effective. As you get more experience you could just use a straight flower pot without the nozzle but I kind of like the nozzle it helps a lot or I don't know if that's what it's called on the front of the flower pot. 
but you can watch the video that I have on YouTube. It's a little older, but it's still really effective. I have a newer one where I show you the Biodex mixture here that I'm talking about here, but I definitely recommend using that, the port, and then I would rinse immediately. It's good to have a helper that will help you rinse the pool surface as you're pouring it. And then you would, if you're going to do it again over again because it didn't come out good, I would definitely go over the areas again. But remember, you're taking off a layer of the plaster with the acid wash. So one round is usually enough for most areas to get the stain off. And if it's not coming off, there may be something happening to the plaster that's going to take one more step. So if you rub your hand on the plaster and it feels rough, it could have calcium buildup, especially in California, covering up the stain. And the stain's not being removed because the calcium is kind of protecting it or, you know, shielding it by being on top of it. So to remove that calcium takes another step. And this step can be very really labor intensive. And it could turn the acid wash into a six to eight hour ordeal beyond just pouring the acid on. So you'll have to go rent a power sander if you don't have one. And that's the regular power sander you see with the disc on it. You put the sandpaper on there. Make sure you get sandpaper for cement when you go to the hardware store. And then you have to power sand those areas where the calcium has built up and is causing the stain not to be removed by the standard acid wash. Again, this is very time consuming, but highly effective if you can sand off that calcium and then you do the acid wash again. So if you're noticing that as you're doing the acid wash, nothing is really happening, but then when you rub your hand over the area, it feels rough, more than likely the calcium has built up so badly that it's covering the stains. So stop the acid wash, rinse the pool, and get a power sander, and then sand the entire surface of the pool down, just so that you know that you're getting all the calcium off, and then resume the acid wash. Now this, for a 15,000 gallon pool, will take you like eight hours to do. That's gonna increase the price dramatically. So when you prep the customer for the acid wash, let them know that this is a possibility. The stains are coming off, and you find calcium covering it, and this is going to cost extra. You're not upselling them, but just tell them that this happens. And if it does happen, they should be aware of it. And if they don't want to continue at that point, you can just fill the pool back up and call it a day. But most people understand this. They want their pool looking good. So they'll be okay with the power sanding and then continuing the acid wash after that. This doesn't happen all the time, but you may run into this. That's why I'm bringing it up here. Now, if you're acid washing a Pebble Tech pool and you notice that there's a lot of calcium, and you'll see this even before you drain the pool and acid wash it. Especially with a darker Pebble Tech pool, you'll see white blotches all over the place. Now, a power sanding of a Pebble Tech pool is not really effective because of the pebbles, and you're not going to be able to get the calcium get into the cracks there. So with a Pebble Tech pool, I don't recommend power sanding that down because you're not going to really get that calcium off. It's not a flat surface like a plaster pool in all respects. So the best way to get the calcium off a Pebble Tech pool is to bead blast the entire pool surface. So you would drain the Pebble Tech pool, hire a bead blasting tile cleaning company, and they'll bead blast the entire Pebble Tech surface and leave it looking brand new again, basically. It'll take off all the calcium, just as if the calcium was built up on the tile line. The bead blasting will take off all the calcium on the Pebble Tech surface. Now, if you're thinking, well, this is gonna be expensive. Yes, it's gonna be expensive. For, let's say, a 14,000 gallon Pebble Tech pool, you're looking at about $1,000 to have it completely bead blasted, maybe a little bit more depending on your area. But $1,000 would be a, you know, kind of a baseline price to go off of for a small Pebble Tech pool, but it's going to be highly effective. It'll remove all the calcium and leave the surface looking brand new again. And of course, they're going to bead blast the tile line also, making that look new again. Now for a plaster pool, you may be thinking, well, you can get the acid and you can take the calcium off the tiles with the acid that's not going to work so what i would like to suggest to you if you're doing a pool that has a lot of white calcium build up on the tile line is when you drain the pool have a bead blaster clean the tiles either after you fill it and finish the acid wash or before you finish it so that when you refill it after the acid wash the tiles look brand new again and you can easily find a tile cleaning company in your area you can type in google you know, tile clean, pool tile cleaning or glass beading or bead blaster. And you should be able to see companies that do tile cleaning in your area. And you want to coordinate that with the acid wash so that you can have a clean new surface on your pool free of stains. Plus the tile line doesn't have calcium buildup. So just be aware and let the customer know that 
you're doing an acid wash to clean the stains off the surface, and then the tile with the calcium buildup is actually another whole process and not part of the acid wash. It's also very important to clean the filter and inspect the pool filter, especially if it's a cartridge or D filter. Sand filter, maybe not as much so, but in a lot of cases you probably want to put new sand in with the sand filter in case there's some metals in there or something weird is happening causing the staining. But I can tell you of a few instances where the pool filter wasn't cleaned along with the acid wash and then when they turned everything back on, DE shot back in there from a dirty filter, making the whole process look really bad. So take the pool filter apart, change out the grids or cartridges if necessary, make sure there's no tears in the DE grids. Make sure that when you fill the pool up, put everything back, everything's going to be crystal clear white. White, not white. Blue, I should say. Not going to be white, but hopefully the plaster is white after the acid wash. But you want to make sure the pool looks crystal clear again once you fill it up to start everything up. So the filter is really important. So while you have the pool draining, take the filter apart, clean it, get that all cleaned up, put it back together. And then when you refill the pool, recharge the filter with diatomaceous earth if it's a D filter. Put new cartridges in if necessary. Make sure there's no holes in the filters basically so that it's not going to shoot back into the pool and kind of ruin your whole acid wash. And then you would just do the startup chemicals. You don't have to do necessarily like a full range of startup chemicals for a new pool. We can of course put cyanuric acid in our conditioner. I would recommend a liquid pool conditioner would be the best way to do it. Or you can use dichlor to charge the pool with conditioner, cyanuric acid along with chlorine. And then you would just balance the pH and alkalinity and start fresh. You know, if you're one of the benefits of the acid wash is now you're starting fresh and you can change how you treat this pool or change what chemicals you use. So you can move away from the trichlor and won't have to worry about the high cyanuric acid building up. But you have a clean slate now and hopefully the pool surface looks really good. You should be part of all that process, the draining, the refilling and then the balancing of the chemicals to get everything back in order for the customer. I don't recommend doing just one step of those three. I think if you're going to do the acid wash, you should be part of the complete acid wash draining, refilling, and then balancing the pool water for the customer. I guess one side note is when I mentioned draining of the pool, not draining it into the gutter. If you're looking for the sewer line, sometimes it's on the side of the house, usually by the kitchen. You can't find it there. Sometimes they're in the garage of newer homes. That's kind of weird, but you'll find it like in my house, it's in the middle of my garage floor and you just unscrew the cap and you can put the waste line into there where you're draining it. You can even use a washing machine waste line if, you, if it's in the garage. And if you're pretty much sure it's not going to overflow, of course have the customer watch it as you're draining the pool to make sure the line stays in there and it's not going to overflow. You may even want to put some duct tape to hold it in there. And again, let the customer know if you're going to use the washer waistline to keep an eye on it so it's not overflowing maybe clogged up who knows but you want to make sure if you use anything like that that it's not going to flood the house or cause flood the garage i wouldn't use the washing machine waistline in the house that'd be kind of weird and you're just asking for trouble but try to find the sewer line in the backyard and those are some common locations on the side of the house maybe up against the house near the kitchen sink sometimes they're in the garage and sometimes you can just have you just have to use the washing machine waste line in the garage if you can't find the actual sewer line because again a lot of cities do not want you to drain a pool directly into the gutter that runoff water usually goes into the ocean or maybe a treatment plant and they don't want the pool water going in there for various reasons maybe it's a saltwater pool maybe you know there's other reasons why they don't want it going into that basin that maybe going i mean going into the ocean with salt i don't think is a problem but there are reasons why they want you draining into the street and you want to make sure you're careful of where you drain that water from the pool. You know, even the salt water, t technically they want you to pump it out into a truck. But no one really does that. And no one really knows it's a salt water pool. But there are some regulations when you drain a pool. So be aware of those before you start what the rules are in your particular county or city. And then I think one final note on that. Since I mentioned the acid will take off a layer of the plaster. If the pool does not need an acid wash. You don't want to do the acid wash. Sometimes a chlorine wash is all it needs to get to get cleared up. So just a chlorine wash may be enough to take a lot of the staining off the surface without doing an acid wash. So the acid wash is kind of like a last resort when there's staining on the plaster 
and there's nothing else that will remove it, then yes, drain it through the acid wash. It should not be the first step in trying to remove the stains because, again, it does take a layer of the plaster off. It should be the last step when you've tried other things. Maybe you've tried some topical chemicals or you drained it and tried a chlorine wash and that was ineffective. Then the acid wash is something you need to do. So the acid wash is a last resort kind of thing to return the pool to a really nice looking uniform surface and it's really effective in a lot of cases. If done right, of course learn the procedure from other pool pros out there as a helper and then when you perfect it you can start doing acid washes on your own with a helper to get the best results. And you can refer to the two videos that I have linked here for the acid wash process. If you're looking for other podcasts that I recorded, go to my website swimmingforlearning.com. On the banner click on the podcast icon. It'll take you to a drop down menu. You can listen to other podcasts at your leisure. And if you want to enhance your business, definitely consider my coaching program at poolguycoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a rest of your week. Pool Service Pro. Open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro.